So in this video, we're going to be talking about the Lagrange invariant in optical systems, and in particular, uh, how this relates to Fourier optics, which we've been learning in the previous videos. Uh, and this is also known as the optical invariant, or this uh, the optical invariant is a slight generalization of the Lagrange invariant, um, but it's it's known by other names as well. Uh, and the my favorite way of thinking of the Lagrange invariant is as conservation of information. Uh, so conservation of information in optical systems. In other words, if we have an object, uh, so we've got this object, which we typically draw as an arrow here, and then we've got an optical system. So maybe it's a bunch of lenses, maybe it's some thick lenses, maybe it's some thin lenses, maybe it's some doublets, uh, maybe we've got some stops as well. Uh, doesn't really matter. Um, the amount of information uh, contained in this object should be able to propagate all the way through this system uninterrupted, as long as this object is within our field of view. So we don't lose information as we propagate through an optical system. But now the natural question becomes, well, how do we represent information in this context? And how do we write down an equation uh, that gives us conservation of information? Um, so let's erase, uh, let's erase everything here, except for our Oh, that's not an eraser, except for a single lens. So we're just going to treat for now a single lens system. And we're going to say that the aperture stop is just at the first lens. So this is our aperture stop. And that we have a field stop right behind it. So this is limiting our field of view. Uh, and we need a finite field of view for the Lagrange invariant to make any sense. So now, what's the biggest amount of information we can represent in this optical system? Uh, well, we're going to take a page out of Nyquist's book and uh, information theory and say that uh, we, we know from uh, information theory in time that the maximum number of bits uh, you can represent in a signal is just two times whatever your bandwidth is. So typically this is uh, in time, so your bandwidth might be one gigahertz, for example, um, multiplied by the amount of time you have to send that signal. But we can represent information in space just as we can in time. And so uh, for an optical system, we expect the number of bits to be two times the optical bandwidth. So whatever the optical bandwidth is, times, uh, let's call this delta H, or the physical size, uh, the physical extent of our object. And we know the bandwidth of our optical system. We know it's just related to this collection angle or to the, the angle that our object forms, or in particular, the angle that the marginal ray forms with the optical axis. So our bandwidth, we can just write, write uh, we can write it in K, so in terms of our K max, um, or the maximum angular frequency we can represent. This is just K naught uh, of free space times our refractive index, which I'm gonna ignore here. So this is in uh, free space. Uh, multiplied by the sine of our angle. So we call this theta max. Uh, and if we want fx instead of kx, because this is what the bandwidth is, uh, then this is just going to be sine of theta max or theta marginal, uh, as, it's in, as, it's, as it is in optical parlance. Uh, divided by the wavelength of free space. And so the expression for our number of bits that we can represent in an optical system is just two times our bandwidth, which is sine of our marginal angle, divided by lambda naught times our object height, so h object. And in the paraxial limit, this sine theta just becomes theta, and so we've got uh, theta marginal times the height of our object divided by the wavelength. And this is just about the Lagrange invariant. So the Lagrange invariant h uh, is just lambda times the number of bits you can represent in your system, or uh, two times the marginal ray height times the object height, or the marginal ray angle times the object height. Or sorry, actually it should be lambda over two times the number of bits, that's just how it's defined. Uh, a little awkward, but whatever. So it's just the marginal angle uh, with the height of the object. And if we wanted, we could add in the refractive, the ambient refractive index in there too. And the most important thing about this quantity, h, is that it's conserved. 
So it doesn't change as you propagate through an optical system. And this is actually the Lagrange invariant for the specific case of where we're at our object plane or equivalently our image plane. But there's another natural question. That's what if we're not in imaging condition or uh, what if we wanted to evaluate the Lagrange invariant at some other point like this point or this point? Um, it appears that it's not conserved because our angle is still staying, staying the same, the angle of our marginal ray, but the height of our object is, I don't really know what it's doing. It's doing something weird. So rather than the height of our object, we're gonna use the height of the chief ray passing through the system. So the height of the chief ray, uh, because if the object subtends our entire field of view, then the height of the chief ray at the object should just be the height of the object. Now the question is, how do we turn this expression into a conserved quantity? Because right now it's clearly not. But it does very much contain the information in our system. Uh, so how do we turn this into something invariant with uh, propagation and focusing? Uh, well, one first, uh, first stab at it is let's just propagate the rays and see what happens. So let's say that we've got our chief ray. So we've got our object. Uh, and this object has a certain height to it. And I'm going to call that, uh, well, let's call that our, the height of our chief ray. And then our marginal ray. So let's, let's assume we've got some imaging system over here. And this is the chief ray. This is the marginal ray. Uh, we don't really need to know what exactly, uh, how exactly they'll evolve through the rest of the system. We just need to know how they propagate some distance d. So the angle of the chief ray, uh, let's call this theta c, uh, the angle of the marginal ray, let's call theta m, and let's change h chief to just hc so that makes our lives easier. And the height of the marginal ray, similarly we can just write as hm. So our original expression up here, uh, excluding the refractive index, because that's just going to be a multiplicative factor out front, uh, was just theta m times hc. And so what are these quantities as a function of distance? Well, theta m doesn't change, right? Uh, with, with propagation, theta m is still theta m at some distance d away. But the height of our chief ray does change depending on the angle of the chief ray. So the height of the chief ray is just whatever it was initially, so the height of the object, uh, plus our propagation distance times the angle of the chief ray. And so we can write that in here. So theta m times h naught plus some distance d times theta of our chief ray. And this is theta m h, well, that's not an h, uh, theta m h naught plus some distance times theta c, also multiplied by theta m. And I'm going to rearrange this so that the marginal ray is sitting right next to d. So d times theta m theta c. And we want this quantity to be independent of distance because we don't care how much we propagate through the system. We should have the same information here as we had here. So all we need to do is subtract out this, this last term. So let's just subtract d times theta m times theta c. And then we'll have our conserved quantity. Uh, but this quantity here, d times theta m, this is just the height of our marginal ray. Uh, and we're always assuming that we're, parax, uh, we're in the paraxial regime, so we can make these small angle approximations. So this is our height of our marginal ray times the angle of our chief ray. So this on the left-hand side was our initial expression, or this in the, in the white brackets was our initial expression, theta m times hc. And this quantity here is what we had to subtract to make this conserved with propagation distance. And so our total Lagrange invariant, now we can just write as the refractive index times our marginal ray angle times our chief ray height minus our marginal ray height times our chief ray angle. And this quantity is conserved not only as you propagate a distance d, but it also turns out it's conserved when you propagate through a lens. And I leave that to you to, to prove. I should also say that for some reason, uh, h is typically defined as the negative of this. Uh, so I'm gonna rewrite it that way. So height of the marginal ray times theta of the chief ray minus height of the chief ray times theta of the marginal ray. 
So this is the Lagrange invariant. And again, it's a measure of the information within a system. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like down below and subscribe to my channel. Uh, also, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post those down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.